I'm not sure what to give her for Christmas. For the nephews, we're giving them pocket knives. Does anyone have any suggestions? Pocket knife? <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up if you would like. You know, no pressure, it's whatever. <laughs> We're trying something a little bit different today. This is r slash pointlessly gendered. I was gonna do like r slash are the straights okay, but my god. <laughs> people were right in telling me that I should probably keep my beak out of that one because it's just way too politically charged. This one is kind of more light and fluffy and uh, even just dipping my toes in for a few minutes, I decided that yes, I enjoy this one a hell of a lot more. So that's what we're gonna do. I swip swapped it out. It doesn't matter. I made the schedule. I could change it however I want. <laughs> so hopefully you guys will enjoy this. I personally don't know how it's gonna go or how it's gonna perform But there seem to be some overlap at least with the nice guy and incel subreddit. So Fingers crossed that it's able to uh, pull some numbers. I guess we'll have to see Regardless, thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead We'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way and then we will dive right into some of this r slash a pointlessly gendered a cringe. Also, we are currently streaming this on Twitch. Uh, that link is in the description. If you'd like to come through, I would love to see you. We could talk face to face, or you know, you could talk to my face, type at my face, whatever. <laughs> if you want, uh, it's an option. So go to gendered bathrooms and replace the signs with two random things. Like a fish and a sandal, and watch as people puzzle out which one is manlier. It's not vandalism if it's an art project. Hey, if you write down the results and properly format the paper, it even counts as science. God, I fucking love science! Alright, which one is manlier, friends? You can let me know down in the comment which one you like. Uh, Twitch chat seems to be leaning towards the sandals, depending on the sandals. Uh, you know, you got Birkenstocks and stuff, and I don't know if that's like super manly necessarily. For me, you know, wifey is a Pisces, so I guess the fish would be womanlier, maybe? Did you see Shark Tale? She's dangerous, super bad. Better watch out, she take cash. Is it, that's probably a factor in this science experiment. Yeah, I saw Will Smith as a fish and it changed my whole perspective on gender. <laughs> I would be really interested to see like the results of this science experiment. I probably would just go pee outside in the corner <laughs> because that is my right as a man. Or you knock on the door and, and wait for a voice to call back to you. If it's a high pitched voice, then you go in there. Uh, if you're a lady. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's probably not a great way to judge it either. You know how many times I've been called ma'am on the phone? <laughs> oh god. You might be able to just peek your head in and, and, and check for urinals or something like that. Or you could do the utilitarian method and use whichever one's cleaner. Whichever one you like more, you, you just go in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what I would recommend. Put that in, in your little science experiment. Go ahead. There's no correlation between any of this data. And that's the way I like it. Be an agent of chaos. <laughs> Here's a related one. Uh, we should split bathrooms by pee versus poop instead of men versus women. <laughs> Uh, I am so for this idea. You have no idea. The thing is that nobody would really want to use the poop bathroom. Why would you ever use the poop bathroom? Ugh. I'm seriously going to go into the pee bathroom and take a poop. <laughs> I'm sorry, all right? Again, it's it's the utilitarian method. I got to do what I got to do. I don't want to be surrounded by other people's farts while I'm making my own farts. Unless, you know, you enjoy that or use it as motivation or something. <laughs> Hi there. How you doing? 
<laughs> Everybody would use the pee bathroom. I'm like 90% sure. I'm sure it would even devolve to the point where like so many people are using the pee bathroom that people start to poo in the pee bathroom sinks. <laughs> <laughs> but then another science experiment for you is you can see at what threshold people will start to use the poop bathroom instead of the pee bathroom. Oh, we are all about science today. I'm loving this. <laughs> uh, I think this is a great idea. Like, no joke at all. We should probably start doing this. Okay, okay. Last bathroom one. Promise swearsies. <laughs> Uh, gents, do epic shit. Ladies, smile, you're losing weight. Oh my god. This is... Why did you have to put the bottom text on it? <laughs> gents, do epic shit. Yeah, bro, it's 2005 and I'm all about epic etc. <laughs> extreme. No, extreme is the 90s early 2000s that was epic i don't know what it is now i'm completely out of touch with the youth <laughs> but i know that this is no longer cool i don't think it would have even been cool back in 2000 whatever and ladies smile you're losing weight that seems like it walked right out of like the 1950s <laughs> do you want your gal to lose a couple extra pounds go ahead sit her down on the toilet <laughs> If she doesn't make, then you just beat her until she does. <laughs> uh, okay. Why do, why? Why do we need to bring this up at all? I guess it's supposed to be funny or clever, but it's just horribly cringy, man. You could just put gents and ladies, and that would be absolutely fine. We don't need to take it any further. Please stop with this. I have to wonder, like, what sort of business would, would even have bathrooms like these? Quite the mystery, I would say. Whatever business this is, they're trying way too hard to seem hip and, and with it. And because they've tried so hard, they have completely failed. And I think that's beautiful. That is just some, some very light and fluffy cringe. <laughs> it's the top of the cringe cake, as far as I'm concerned. I'd tell you to change it for reels, but then uh, people wouldn't be able to take pictures and post it everywhere. And maybe you're getting some free advertising, except the fact that there's no logo anywhere. <laughs> I don't even know where this is. I couldn't imagine where this could be. It feels like it came right out of a fever dream. So we'll move on. We'll talk about some other stuff besides bathrooms. That's not the only thing that's pointlessly gendered. Oh, no. How about Kinder Eggs? <laughs> <gasps> I can't have these. Those are illegal. <laughs> yeah, you forgot that they was pointlessly gendered, right? I mean, there's a, a toy inside that supposedly your child might like better if they're a boy or a girl, but usually it's just like a little piece of paper craft crap, and nobody pays any attention to that anyways. It's just like a, a, an extremely horrible marketing tactic that only works on children, but oh my god, does it work. Every time we're at the grocery store, my boy sees Kinder Eggs, he's like, oh! I'm like, oh, here, here's a pink Kinder Egg. He's like, no, I need a blue one. It's like... It's been so deeply ingrained. He's four years old. Where did he learn this shit? From the TV. Definitely. Wow. I did not know that fucking chocolate eggs were gendered. Okay. Let me tell you a story about the goddamn pink eggs. I work at a concession stand in an ice rink. We sell a bunch of chocolate bar and snacks and other shit, including Kinder Surprise eggs. So one day, this woman comes up to the counter with her two little kids, a girl who's about six or seven, and a little boy, maybe three or four. The mom asks what they want, and the little girl points at Kinder Eggs and says, One of those! I asked if she wanted the white or the pink egg. She said pink. The little boy pointed to the Kinder Egg and said, One of those! I asked if he wanted the white or pink egg. He said pink. Holy shit. It was like I opened the gates of hell! <laughs> uh, 
The mom absolutely flipped, and she was like, You are not getting the pink egg! It's only for girls! You can get the white one or nothing at all! The little boy looked at his mom and said, But I want the same as sister. The mom completely ignored him and turned to me and gave me a death glare. He can have the white egg! <laughs> I had to give the little boy a white egg when he wanted the pink so that he could be the same as his big sister, and he started crying. The mom just reiterated that the pink egg was for girls and told him that boys don't cry. And this, friends, is why we should not gender fucking chocolate eggs. This is the start of toxic masculinity, friends. 100%. You're like, oh, <laughs> boys don't show any emotion. Yeah, because shit, like, we've been programmed since we were little kids <laughs> that this is how things are supposed to operate. And I'm hopeful that one day we'll be able to, to break the mold and, you know, people will just be able to buy whatever chocolate eggs they want. If my little boy wanted a pink egg, that would be fine. I like to mess with him by offering him the pink egg. I know he'll never take it, but if one day he decided that yes, he wanted a pink egg, I'll let him buy it. A Kinder Egg ain't gonna make the boy gay, and even if it did, like, who cares? <laughs> like, like my jeans have to carry on, like I'm fucking Henry VIII or something. Buy whatever egg makes you happy, alright? I see exactly why this kid wanted the pink egg, so he could be like his sister. You'd swear that this mother thought that the, the pink egg was full of extragen. <laughs> A little boy's gonna grow boobs or something like that. <laughs> I'm sorry for the extragen joke. I gotta pack it in. We gotta walk away from this. But yes, this mother is, is a fucking monster. I don't understand why, why the little girl gets to pick. Would it have been okay if the little girl picked a white egg, or are we gender policing that too? Oh no, it's got a, a helicopter or something inside. Next thing you know, you'll be wearing overalls. <laughs> are you really that terrified, mom? How about you do like the actual motherly thing and start fostering, you know, a different way of thinking. Stop policing your kids uh, about a freaking Kinder Egg. It doesn't make any sense at all, man. <laughs> Who cares? They're just gonna throw the toy away anyways. Guess what? Chocolate is, is gender non-specific, okay? You can enjoy chocolate no matter what your genitalia looks like. I'm pretty sure that's science as well. Oh, I, I just hate this story, man. Little, little four-year-old boy crying over a Kinder Egg because he can't get the one that his sister has. Sad, dude. And the mom feels nothing about it. <laughs> She's so adamant that, that he can't have the pink one. Get over it, dude. It, it's not... You ever hear pick your battles? This is not a hill worth dying on. We gotta move on. <laughs> what a piece of trash. What a dumpster fire. And Matt Haig brings up another good point over on Twitter. He says, I got called gay at school for liking books. I got called a big girl's blouse by a teacher for not liking rugby. A coward for not wanting to fight. Mocked as a girl for wearing a yellow jacket. Told to be a man when nervous. The pressure that boys feel to be unfeeling morons is intense. Resist! I, I have tried to resist. I've been pretty emotionally open on my channel, on the Twitch streams. I've cried more than once in front of you guys, okay? I'm not scared to wear my emotions on my sleeve, but it took a long time to come to grips with that, okay? I felt less than a man for a very very long time of my life. I'm like, I don't like working on cars, you know? I'm more like a video games and computer type of dude. Is that manly enough? Will somebody love me despite all of that? And yes, somebody did. Wifey sees past that. I'm a good provider. I'm a good father, okay? Not to toot my own horn, but none of these things make a good father or a good provider or a good man. 
not wanting to fight, like, that's good. You probably shouldn't want to fight people. It's not normal to want to go around and fight everybody. For not liking books? Oh yeah, being smart? <laughs> totally gay. Hey fellas, is it gay to be smart? <laughs> I like reading too, motherfucker. I'd much rather do that than play sports. Oh, you know, like rugby. You're not manly enough. I've thrown the notion of manliness out the window because it's completely useless. I don't give a damn whether you think I'm manly enough. I've already proved my manliness. I've proved my worth to the planet Earth, okay? I don't need to go around throwing it in pe people's faces or, or uh, scrabbling for, uh, for approval. Just like, please, don't think that I'm like a girl. <laughs> Who gives a shit? I'll wear a yellow jacket. <laughs> That's probably the weirdest one on the list. The yellow Power Ranger's a girl, so you're a girl now. You remember when pink wasn't, like, a girl's color? Back in the Victorian era, and for some reason we just bastardized the whole goddamn thing. We're like, yeah, now this is for girls, and that's for boys. <laughs> uh, what the fuck, dude? I'll wear a pink shirt. My guitar is pink. Pink is a nice color. That's all I'm saying. Any dude who's out here trying to call you not masculine for something that you've chosen to do is simply trying to get you to step back in line. And to that, I say, poo fucking poo. <laughs> You're not gonna tell me how to live my life, okay? I'm out here having the best time. And apparently that just affects you so deeply. You're like, why does, why does he enjoy reading books? <laughs> Why can't I enjoy anything? I better tell him to stop reading books by calling him gay. Like, this has so little effect on me these days, but looking back, I mean, this is something that I needed to hear. I wish I could go back and tell 20-year-old me, like, do not let anybody else tell you how to live. So, I can't go back and tell myself, but I'm telling you right now, friends, if anybody has ever made you feel less masculine, for the things that you enjoy, they're only trying to shepherd you around. Whether they're male or female, they're trying to manipulate you. You don't need to fall for it, okay? Do what you enjoy, live your best life, and that will 100% be enough. Thank you. <laughs> Guy one, okay, nail polish on the hand means it's a woman. Guy two, yeah, but you can't see the other hand's nails. How do we make it clear that it's, that it's a man? Yeah, put a, a fucking tie on the wrist. <laughs> uh, yes, come down to our staff relay and don't forget your wrist ties. I would honestly wear a bracelet that looked like that. That is just so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it would get in the way, it would get caught in heavy machinery while I'm out there doing manly man things. <laughs> Why does it really matter if the one hand is male or female? It's a staff relay. Yes, I understand that both men and women probably work at this company. This is like trying to be so inclusive that it's come back around the other way. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could have just used a man's hand, but we don't want to say that the man's a default. So, okay, we got the nail polish on there. We, we know that it's a woman, but we also want to make sure men are included. <laughs> now we got to put a fucking tie on the wrist. <laughs> uh, this is one of the most ridiculous things that I have ever seen. And I would have loved to have been in the design meeting for this goddamn abomination. What were you smoking? <laughs> Why couldn't we have just made the, the arm hairy? If it's a man's arm, just make it hairy, right? <laughs> no, we don't want to make people who don't have hairy arms feel bad. Maybe they won't feel manly enough or something like that. <laughs> we're just going around in circles. It's completely ridiculous. Do what you want to do. Whoever shows up to the goddamn staff relay shows up. <laughs> and I hope they show up with ties on their wrists. <laughs> uh, hilarious. Uh, honestly, I probably wouldn't show up because I don't want to run. Especially not for a fucking company that I work for. 
<laughs> I, I don't run on principle. I ain't running for you. <laughs> but if you are selling those those bracelet tie things, uh, hit me up, maybe. <laughs> I'll invest in that. They could have so easily used a wristwatch instead of a fucking tie. Uh, never mind. It's fine. Whatever. We're moving on. <laughs> uh, here's some more corporate ridiculousness for you guys. <laughs> Studios. Okay. It's absolutely imperative that the audience knows which one's a girl wolf and which one's a boy wolf. Studios. Every single time. I wait. I got it. <laughs> Yeah, girls have the big eyes, and guys have the big nose. Unfortunately, I know which one's the boy and which one's the girl. I probably don't even have to tell you guys which one is supposed to be the boy and which one is supposed to be the girl. So I guess I understand why they do it. <laughs> because it's effective. Instead of going out to make a documentary and addressing every single time that the animals are in frame that this is a, a boy and this is a girl. <laughs> they just make them look slightly different. I, I, I get it. That's why we have chosen an artistic medium instead of taking a photograph, right? Does it make it pointlessly gendered? Uh, it's borderline, man. There's a lot of posts like this in Pointlessly Gendered. When I was scrolling through top posts of all times, I swear I saw five of this, like, exact meme. But one of the biggest things about art is, is interpretation, right? And, and this is an interpretation that obviously the majority of people can understand pretty easily. Even in the wild, they, they have differences between male and female wolves. It's just not as easy to tell by looking, necessarily. Especially not looking at their face, right? <laughs> you gotta look somewhere else, generally. But I don't know if it's pointlessly gender- I guess it is. But I will go to bat for this one and defend the reason that they are doing it. I, I, I do see why. If we want to nitpick and, and make fun of studios for doing it, I guess you're within your rights to do that as well. But honestly, it just makes sense. Try making a movie without doing this. All of your characters are wolves and they all look the same. And <laughs> just get lambasted by critics everywhere that you go. I don't think it's going to work out too well, okay? <laughs> so yeah, it's funny, I guess, and I do get it, but... This is not a hill that I'm willing to die on, personally. Um, I, I think we're done with this. I said all I got to say about this. Moving on. A question. I got a 12-year-old niece, and I'm not sure what to give her for Christmas. For the nephews, we're giving them pocket knives. Does anyone have any suggestions? Pocket knife? <laughs> Yes! Fuck yes, dude! <laughs> Why would you not get your niece a pocket knife? It, are you scared? She's gonna turn into a, a big fat lesbian because I bought her a pocket knife when she's 12. What are you supposed to- what, what response were you expecting here? A uh, sports bra! Barbie playhouse! Just get her a pocket knife, bro. Put her on the same level as the nephews. Maybe she doesn't use it as much. Maybe she uses it far more. You don't really know unless you give the kid the option, right? You know what? Matter of fact, I'm gonna go one step beyond. So guess what? All the nephews get pocket knives, but that niece, she is getting some mall ninja shit, all right? I'm gonna buy her a butterfly knife. That's girly, right? It's got girl right in the name. She'll cut her fingers a few times. If she doesn't lose her finger completely, then she's gonna look like a real badass. <laughs> <sighs> All the nephews, they're gonna be so jealous. They're gonna be like, why does niece get the cool knife? It's like, yeah, because you guys can't handle it quite yet. Maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll gift my katana to you. Is this is this uncle like a total neckbeard or what? He seems like the weird uncle a little bit. <laughs> Giving pocket knives to the 12-year-olds. Hey, look. I will buy my kid a pocket knife when they're fucking good and ready. If you give my child a pocket knife without me explicitly saying, yeah, it's fine to give my child a weapon. You're not invited over to Christmas anymore, uncle. 
Uncle touches in his puzzle basement. You won't wear a shirt and you'll cry. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that the, the niche should get a pocket knife just like everybody else. But even on top of that, the bigger issue is this fucking uncle giving out knives to, to literal children. Personally, I do think 12 years old is old enough to have a knife, but it also kind of depends on the kid, doesn't it? <laughs> my brother? I I'm not sure. I vaguely remember my brother stealing one of my uncle's, like, knife collection knives when we were, I think he was 10 and I was 12. And he ended up stabbing himself in the hand trying to do, like, little flippy tricks. So... <laughs> like I said, if you've got a kid that can use it responsibly, the parents would know far more than Uncle Touches would. I'm pretty sure. It's just ridiculous. Horrible person, horrible present. <laughs> uh, but I do agree with Jackie. If if the parents agree, if you're gonna buy them knives, go ahead, get them all pocket knives. Equality can be fun. Moving on. I had a customer ask me, do you have any cookbooks for men? And I think the saddest part was that we did. <laughs> yeah, take me to Flavortown, daddy! <laughs> That's about the only, like, four men cookbook that I know. We do barbecue and grilling and meats. It's like, dude, everybody can cook, you know? Some of the best chefs in the world are men, all right? <laughs> I think it is a little bit weird to, to pointlessly gender a cookbook, but you do have to sort of know your audience, and that's what we do to get ahead in these days and times. The end times of capitalism. Everybody has a fucking cookbook out, so you need your, your little niche. You're like, oh yeah, are you a real man? Then you want to cook like a real man. And if you don't buy this book, you'll never be a real man. <laughs> And also, don't wear that yellow jacket or buy a pink Kinder Egg or you'll never be a real man either, right? <laughs> you don't tell me how to live my fucking life, okay? I'm gonna buy a Julia Child's cookbook, just soak everything in butter, and then guess what? I win! Because I had a heart attack and died and don't need to deal with this bullshit anymore. <laughs> uh, oh, God. That's like many political statements packed into one simple tangent about a cookbook. <laughs> We're taking this completely off-road, and I love it. I'm not going to shame that dude for buying a, a male-oriented cookbook. I'm not going to shame women for buying a female-oriented cookbook. Female. <laughs> I wish that we could use whatever cookbook, and once we're comfortable enough with uh, the genders, then I hope that one day we'll be able to. I'll be able to walk in and buy whatever fucking cookbook I want, even the pink one, about baking cookies, without getting a weird look, just because I want to bake myself some delicious cookies. Fuck off, mind your business. How about that? Mind your business. Yes, I feel a certain type of way. And that's why we got to move on. <laughs> Belgian man discovers wife of 19 years was born a man. Man said wife was beautiful and feminine. Didn't suspect anything in two decades of marriage. Says he understands now why she wasn't good at ironing. <laughs> uh, you realize men iron too, right? You realize, like, 50% of Navy boot camp was learning to iron things nicely. <laughs> I don't feel like it makes me less of a man. This is sort of like a, a crying game kind of question, is it not? Like, obviously, you love this person deeply for 19 years, but then it comes out that she's actually a man, or, or was a man, I suppose. She's actually a she because she identifies as a she, so, why do you not love this person anymore all of a sudden? I guess if you have the logic of, like, she was keeping this secret from you, I could see it. You know, it, it is a dishonest way to get into a relationship. But after 19 years, you're gonna throw all that away. Uh, I don't know. I definitely wouldn't appreciate being lied to, but uh, we could have a conversation about it. You know, I think that we could talk it out. And it seems like maybe they did talk it out. 
you know, all it says was that he discovered that she was born a man. It didn't say he left or anything. So, yeah, maybe I do have some hope for the future or something like that. The weirdest part of the whole thing is is the highlighted part. <laughs> That's why she wasn't good at ironing. Yeah, that, that old ironing dysphoria. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand the logic there. Quite a wild take. But yeah, I hope that you crazy kids can work it out, you know? Y you loved each other. I think you still love each other. You just got some things that, that need talking through. It's gonna be okay. God, this one's really heartbreaking. I, I read between the lines something heartbreaking in the last one, but this one honestly makes me angry. Dad with breast cancer rejected from support groups because he's a man. A dad said he felt isolated and lonely after being rejected by Facebook groups because he's a male and he had breast cancer. Guys can get breast cancer. Guys need support too. Especially a dude that had breast cancer. He's got nowhere else to turn. It's so rare for men to have it, but... Obviously, he did legitimately have it. This is, uh, I don't even want to call it reverse sexism. It's just plain out-and-out -out sexism. He's not joining this group to, to get a glimpse at women's surgery scars or some shit like that. He's joining because he wants to make an emotional connection with people who have gone through the same thing he went through. And yes, it's got to be traumatic. Okay, a breast isn't necessarily the same thing for a man. Okay, women define themselves by their breasts in large part. I don't think that it's right. I, I don't support it at all. I'm a, I'm a big member over here. Founding member of the Itty Bitty Titty Committee. All right? <laughs> but I find that a lot of women feel insecure about their breasts. They're too small. They're too large. They're, they're shaped weird. Their breasts, they're beautiful. <laughs> we, we love them as men, all right? So yeah, uh, as a woman, it's probably very traumatic. It's not traumatic in the same way for a man. I can understand that much, but he survived cancer. He went through a major surgery. He's just reaching out, trying to make this connection. And people are like, nah, not you. You have a penis. It says he desperately wanted support beyond his immediate family. He's an older guy, probably not that many friends, so he reached out online, and, and he was shut down. He was turned away simply because of his gender. Do you think that he could have put up an anime girl profile picture and gone in that breast support group and probably got accepted? Yeah, okay, but he wanted to come correct. He, he knows that he is who he is, and he's like, you guys, I need some help, and because he's a dude, they turned him away? Ugh. Cancer does not discriminate. It, it's so sad to witness something like this, man. I don't have any experience with this sort of thing, but David, if, if you happen across this video and you're out in the Philippines, come kick it, bro. We can have some beers or something like that. I, I'll do what I can for you because, yeah, if you need a connection, I'm here. I got a community. We are very supportive. And you definitely didn't deserve to be treated this way. God. <laughs> That's a girl drink. Yeah, okay, Brock. Enjoy your 5% bread-flavored soda. <laughs> I'm drinking a fruit smoothie that I have me fucked up beyond recognition in 15 minutes. It's called efficiency. <laughs> uh... I'm all about fruit-flavored drinks, bro. I've talked about uh, how much I love soju many times on this channel. It's like, it just tastes like a peach, but it's got the alcohol level of wine. So not only am I getting drunk way faster than you are, I'm also doing it in a way that I enjoy so very much. I'm like, oh, that's delicious. Give me another one. <laughs> Whereas these dudes out here with like stout lagers or a, a, a whiskey thinking that they're proving something. It's like all you're proving is that you, you want to drink something that tastes like wood. It tastes like literal dog shit and you're only drinking it so other people will think that you're cool. Is there somebody out there that legitimately enjoys it? I, I have my doubts. 
<laughs> Again, you ain't gonna tell me how to live, all right? I wanna drink this cherry drink. It's delicious. This one tastes like oranges. God, you can't stop me. <laughs> uh, grass soda. Miss me with that shit. I'll have a beer every once in a while, but it's not my first choice, I'll tell you that. If they're like, hey, what do you want from this menu? I'm gonna be like, y'all got margaritas? <laughs> Bring me a margarita and put extra cherries in it, too. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about getting judged by Brock. I'm proud of this dude. He definitely got it down. Ain't gonna let any other dude out there tell him how to live. That is Giga Chad energy right there. I think my favorite, favorite drink ever in life is probably just like a simple gin tonic, but that's because I can make it at home. A margarita, you gotta get a blender involved. Mojito, you gotta have like mint on hand. <laughs> that shit's so complicated. Just give me some gin and tonic and you pour it together. Plus it glows under the black light. Oh, if you up in the club, right? Nobody goes to the club anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if I'm out and about, if I'm buying a drink for myself, I'm gonna make that bartender work for it. You don't just pop open a beer and slide it down. Pull the fucking blender out. <laughs> uh, I'm paying $15 for this goddamn drink. You're gonna make it right. <laughs> uh, oh, I love this line of thought, honestly. This is probably one of my favorite tweets of all time. High five right here, Red Foreman. <laughs> Giga Chad, like I said. Thing I legit fucking heard at this coffee shop, barista. And would you like your coffee iced or hot? Dude, eh, well, I'm not a lady, so hot, obviously. Oh, yes, obviously. Hey, fellas, is it gay to drink iced coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'm finding out that I am not the man that I thought I was. Oh, darn it! <laughs> now I can't enjoy iced coffees anymore because this guy said so. <laughs> now I'm a lady because I put ice in my coffee. It's easier to drink. It's way more delicious, okay? He's probably got this image of himself. He's got, I got this manly calloused mouth that drinks boiling hot coffee. <laughs> you are playing it up way too much, bro. Just try an iced coffee, would you? You would find out that it is a, a life-changing experience. The truth is, no matter what coffee I fucking order, it's going to sit on my desk long enough that it's room temperature, so... Overall, I like room temperature coffee. Maybe that makes me a bisexual. I'm not really sure how, how this coffee uh, sexuality scale works quite yet. We're, we're, we're working out the kinks. It's going to be fine. <laughs> uh, I, I love that he said this to the barista. I bet the barista's like, oh my god, my panties are soaked. He said he drinks his coffee hot. Oh! Right? <laughs> uh, I don't know, bro. This seems like such a weird flex. You could easily say it in reverse and like nothing changes. <laughs> I'm not a lady, so iced, obviously. Only ladies drink hot coffee, right? It's just such a reach. This is, this is the distillation of r slash pointlessly gendered right here. You have just gendered, uh, coffee temperatures. <laughs> uh, it's so weird. Just go touch grass, bro. That's the only advice I got for you. Good God. All right, one more. One more and then I'm gonna get out of here for today. Uh, straight people are so fucking wild. Today, my coworker informed me that cafes are for women and bars are for men. And her husband refuses to enter Starbucks in case they think he's gay? Huh? <laughs> What's up next in incredibly unnecessary gendering? So, the bar that he goes to has only guys in it? 
That doesn't sound very straight. <laughs> uh, yeah, baby. I love my, my chosen bar. It's got this hole in the bathroom stall. Straight as hell, boy. <laughs> Put your junk in there. You never felt straighter. <laughs> you meatball freak? Uh-huh. All right, let's do this. Uh, oh my god. This guy won't even step into a Starbucks. Imagine your masculinity being so fragile that you're like, oh my god. What if somebody sees me in Starbucks? <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck, bro. Why are you letting other people dictate how you live your life? That's the whole point of this episode, I guess. Don't let anybody else tell you how to live, alright? You want to go to Starbucks? Go ahead and get some Starbucks. You know he's standing outside like a cuck while his wife goes in and orders coffee for him. <laughs> What's gayer? <laughs> you, an you answer me that. <laughs> uh, this is so ridiculous, bro. Does it not sound like the most fucking exhausting way to live? Worrying what everybody else is gonna think about you. Oh, is what I'm doing right now gay or, or not? Like, bro, just, just let it go. Be who you are. <laughs> There's no reason not to just be who you are. I don't understand why you're letting other people live for you. And they ain't even doing it right. They ain't even having fun. <laughs> it's sad. It's sad to watch, honestly. This was definitely a different brand of cringe. A little bit lighter and fluffier than the depths of depravity that we usually get into. But I can't say that I didn't enjoy this subreddit. We might come back to it at some point in the future. I hope that you guys will let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, you know, subscribe, do all that stuff if you haven't yet. Maybe share this video around, because that's a pretty big brain play. We got all kinds of links down in the description. Plugs, playlists, podcasts, you know, Teespring. Uh, we're on Spotify and iTunes and CastBox and Deezer and all these podcast services that I never even heard of. <laughs> but it's automatically uploaded, so I don't have to worry about it. We've also got social medias. Hooray! Facebook, Twitter, Discord. We also are live streaming on Twitch, as I mentioned. And I'm getting more support from all over the internet. Places like, you know, my YouTube memberships and my Patreon. I'd like to thank those folk as I do every episode. Jerry, Jerry, much. So, uh, thank you! Why are Jerry, Darth Luscious, Harley Owen, Repent the Squirrel, Robert Weiss, Camille Sarah, Chase with Blue Kraken, Roxanne Wolf, Sim, Jerry, Conrad, Inky, Captain Cloud, Jerry, Aaron, Jerry, Esteban, Farad, Lang, Sign, Jerry Crusader, or Gaby Steve, Silent Robber, PCB, Fluxer, Soldier of Industry, Welcome, my friend. Jerry, the original Jerry, that's who that is. Tick Jerry, Destiny Piper, Jerry, Kitsune, 11 Jerry, the two Jerry's, very tired Jerry, Adjusted Jargonian Jerry, and Frank and Barry, that's a hiding bitch, isn't it? <laughs> Aspen XO, Assassin Punk Jerry, Aurora Wildheart, Baby Jerry, Bailey Joy, Peter Jerry, Ben Ramirez, Pitch Gremlin, Blip Blip Jerry, I'd like to order all the Jerry's in the register. Yes, this is a robbery. Oh my god, put your hands up. Brown Scraggy, Catholic Jerry, Commander J, Tank, Confederate Jew, Dennis Jayton, Dr. Lux, Aaron Aaron, East Mars, Frozen Over Studios, Fire Drake, Gypsy, Hadrian VR, I'm Slim Jerry, I'm the real Jerry, Inquisitor Jerry, Irish Pirate, Hoist the Colors, there be a Tendy Friggin' off the port bow. <laughs> Iron Allo, Arabian Jam, Opinion of J. Chris, J.M. Coon, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Dow, Lama the Trucker, John Hero, John Jerry, Jingle Heimer Schmitz, Crew He, Cuddly Cracking, Legend Maker, Miss Monday, Lord Jerry O, Luca was a clever Patreon name, <laughs> he drove so goddamn fast. <laughs> like and subscribe, <laughs> Milady Nix, The Last Jerry Bender, Malama Man, Melgar the Destroyer, Metal Factor, Needless King 89, Nightmare Jerry, Paragon Soul, Fade of Pines, Jerry Kins and Jerry Beth, Queens, Quailers of Quagmires, Rose Jerry Miller, Sorita the Lolita, Sassy Octopus, Sa, Scarlet's Coven, Sergeant Gay Cop, Bring Up the Law, Silo Wimp, Stephanie Goodner, Sign Up, Boomstick, Brilliant Tomago, Tabio, Gabaloo, Taylor Ferret, The Italian Greyhound, Dino, The Little Zoo, The One True Fusky, Train Boy, Try to find another mob and get back to the real world. Um, you probably don't want to blow into that balloon knot. <laughs> Stinky balloon. V3 Prime, Vanguard Angel, Viking Jerry, Wiki Tech, Will Mags. Y'all remember that roller ring from a while ago? Turns out it was a Panda Express. I mean, it's now a Panda Express, or, or I'm a little confused by that. Zebedee Gargoyle, <laughs> Cobra Red Mooney, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is though. Red Wing, Nogviper, Saint Blessing, Third Stuff, Venom Jerry, Jace Christensen, Basic Bitch, Big Dad Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one like Jerry the Neckbeard Hunter, a uh, normal Jerry, an Admiral T Tank, Error Alder, another stupid hipster, Atomic Jerry Zilla, Bartender Kaleo, Blueberry and Apple Pie, Broken Spine Horseradish, but Greedy Jerry, such a nice girl. Yes, nice. Cake Jerry, the original Tiffer Jerry, California Jerry Girl, Shepherd Seven Lock, Chicago Panda, Corey Does Art, uh, sometimes. Corporal Lambo, Princess Furry Warrior, Lou Jerry, Crip Cities, Define Jerry, Death to Tuna, Dominion Dangerous, Dr. Cody Zawa, working on the Mountain Dew Destroyer to defeat Jerry Zilla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dwarfy Dude, eh, it's too tired to come up with anything. Just reread the name above me, Jerry. Dwarfy Dude, Jerry. <laughs> Ghost of Elba, he cannot. Janet and Jerry's roaming the streets of Finland, hunting down the Rudo headband. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Gerald of Rivia, Jerry Thomas is having New Year's way of the apocalypse. Jerry Springer, the results are in. You are not the neckbeard. Yay! Jerry the Sussy Pocket, Jerry's mom has got it going on. Check out the mustache on Jerry Aldo Rivera. Jerry Roxers, Jerry Roleplay Game, Keaton Tails, Kid Mobbles, Kitskin, Little Ann Woods, Lucia Lovecraft, M M Machia, CD, maybe next time Milk Fed Game, Miss Duchess, Not Invisible Angel, Raptor, she's my Jerry Pie. Sky Mara Ravenswood, Snarry, that's Nom Jerry. Snowman, what is best in life? To crush your neckbeards, to put the feet to Jesus, to hear the lamentations of the body. Pillows. <laughs> Smoothie the Rogues, Spooky Scary, Jerry Ton, Techno Dubs, the original Jerry, not to Infinity Jerry and Beyond.
Bond. We all know the way. Underwater movies. Uh, throws a two-liter Mountain Dew. Grow my neck beer. Grow. It's Jerry time. Holds Red X Morpher. Hygiene. It's Jerry time. Holds Red X Morpher. Humility. <laughs> Good Lord. And thank you to my one dollar patrons as well. Of course, we'd also like to thank our YouTube channel members. Uh, we got Skyler May, Amara. Oh, that sounds familiar. Gypsy Barber, Train Boy, Fire Drake, a Tiny Boy, Samantha, Desk Flagship, Bearded Snake. Buy two, get one hand. Definitely a couple of double dippers in there. Thank you to all the supporters of the channel, no matter how big or small. If you would like to join them in supporting, that's absolutely huge. If you can't do it right now, though, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe, like, go uh, watch some more Red X videos, right? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, uh, bye bye